Sri, welcome. Welcome to this at another session by you. Yes, so nice, so nice. So, just uh, uh, the, this one of the senior most disciples of Pujya Swami Dayan and Saraswati. Yes. So, we are happy to have you here. And uh, Swamiji does not need any inter introduction locally or internationally. <laughs> Swamiji has been a very, uh, what do you call, great exponent of self-knowledge throughout the world. And uh, he has, he has, uh, he has uh, what do you call, he expresses his uh, uh, eulogies to Pujya Swamiji. Only he can do that. Nobody else can do that. He, is, he, is, he specializes in uh, what you call in uh, singing the glories of Pujya Swamiji. Only he can do that, honestly. And uh, the way in which uh, that he picturizes Swamiji's Pujya Swamiji's teachings to the world at large, that again only he can do that. So Swamiji has been the uh, course student at uh, Sandipani Sadhanalaya. 1972 to 75, one of the first courses by uh, Pujya Swamiji, designed by Pujya Swamiji as a three year course at Sandipani. He was the first student of Swamiji. So, and he had a lot, lot of very sweet memories of Swamiji. And uh, what happened? Ah, yes, and um, he has, uh, he has um, uh, addressed. Uh, he has, he has uh, accompanied Pujya Swamiji in the Millennium Summit meet um, uh, when Swamiji was uh, uh, attending that session. And that is one of his, again, one of his unique uh, contributions. We have been a shadow of Pujya Swamiji in those uh, those times. And uh, and ever since he has been teaching and uh, he has established uh, what you call ashrams and gurukulams and study centers at Uttandi at Trivandamalai. And uh, other uh, at Orissa, and he has also uh, founded and uh, running uh, educational institutions with cultural uh, heritage education, uh, giving to all the people uh, at Orissa and Diasaras at Uttandi. Welcome, Swamiji. Welcome to this, uh, another session by you. Please make us feel at home. Home. <laughs> yes, yes, nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. In fact, once we start uh, talking about Swamiji and this knowledge, we are always at home. See, uh, let us say a simple thing. Now, this is a beautiful occasion. I know whoever are there, I can't see any one of them. But I am seeing your face and I am seeing some people in front of me also. Just think of it. The subject matter that you have given and the way you have introduced also, Singing the glory of the knowledge and the Guru, the Swamiji himself. Something everybody shall remind, remember him. Now, from that we shall begin. To remember Swamiji is to be at home. Reason, the way he has revealed the whole dimension of the scriptures in our Upanishads, Veda, Vedanta, and all the Vasyas, where you can see. Being with one's own self is absolutely easy. Like, now when you are saying we are remembering something, you, you can't forget it. How can you forget? You say forgetting means forgetting yourself. So there is no question of forgetting. Because when you try to remember something, whether it is a verse from the book, the teaching or the teacher, in order to remember anything, you must have the thought of that something. But the remember, remembrance comes from the memory. I'm sitting down here. Suppose I'm thinking of Swami, you want to remember Swamiji. What shall I do? I'll close my eyes or open my eyes. But before the thought comes on, before the Swamiji's thought comes up, already I am there in whose presence the memory is recognized. A memory comes and goes. Your self-consciousness in whose presence all the thoughts are remembered doesn't come, doesn't go. 
therefore you are always at home even now in this class now if i ask you where are you we are you are sharing certain thoughts i to ask where are you what shall you say i am at home some people will be at home some people may be nowadays mobile phone you can be in a beach front or in a mountain top or anywhere wherever you are at this moment that is your home your home is your home your car is your home wherever you are that's your home but just because you are there outside in a beach front or mountain top in a car or in under a tree that does not mean you are listening how are you listening whatever i speak those words will reach your ears just because you are listening with your ears it will not make any difference because if your mind is somewhere you are not going to listen to anything so whatever i am speaking your ears you are listening to that and true to the sound the speech the thoughts are there even those thoughts are not listening just because you are having the thoughts that's not listening because you can be totally distracted and totally unaware of your thought if you want to really listen first my words should reach your ears true to the sound to the perception the thoughts must be there and those thoughts you must be aware of so to really listen you must be at home to be conscious to be conscious of something first you must be conscious what you are conscious of is not the consciousness in whose presence you are conscious of that is something always there so can you be away from the home at any time home is where you are ask me where are you if i ask you a question where are you you shall say i am at home listen please you may say you are at home where is that home wherever let us say i am living in madras so i shall say this is our ashram i am sitting in the ashram that's true but the same place also is part of chennai city so ashram is here chennai city is here chennai city is here tamil nadu also is here not only tamil nadu is here india also is here the same spot that i'm sitting down it is ashram chennai tamil nadu india expand it can be part of the asia part of the earth earth is also here solar system also is here galaxy of course is here are you expanding universe so when you say here you are at home what is the hope now whole universe is our home but then you must see clearly just because we are sitting down with a body and the universe that doesn't mean anything the body must be alive and for you to listen listen carefully friends you must have the ears so listening means what not just being here physically sitting down in the physical universe but using your ears and when you listen to the sudden the sound you are listening true to that perception true to that sound thoughts also must be there because listening when you say listening your body by itself has no sense of listening as if in your body has no sense of being alive deho na janat the body doesn't know anything deho hamiti deho na bhakti these are the jewels from swami's teachings when you are teaching sadarshana and other things deho hamiti deho na bhakti the body doesn't say i am the body deho na janati the body doesn't know so what happens as you are listening the sounds reach our ear 
So I'm sitting down in this room, which is my home. But this home is a home because body is my home. Without the body home, this home means nothing. Like you have got a home, you have got doors and windows. Those doors and windows do not see anything. The doors and windows in the house do not see anything. You must be behind the doors and windows to see that. So in this physical body home, you have got doors and windows of perception. Your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your nose, your smell. And these sense organs by themselves will not perceive unless you are conscious with it. So true to the sound that you are listening to, the thoughts are coming. Those thoughts, what all you have heard from childhood onwards, whatever you have heard, tasted, touched, smelled, through this physical body, through the sense organs, you have created your own personal universe, of which few people are part. Eight billion are not part of your personal memory. The whole universe is not part of your personal memory. Few thoughts are there. That is your personal universe. You may be saying you are living in this world. Think for yourself, friends. Are you living in this whole universe? Figuratively true. But in reality, you are living with your body. And with the body, you are not always living unless you are living in your thoughts. Ask yourself, do you live at the level of the universe? Are you living in the level of your body? Your senses? Or you are always at the level of your thoughts. From your thoughts directed every movement of the physical body in the vast expanse of the universe. So for your thoughts to be seen, these your thoughts, your memories cannot be seen by the eyes, heard by the ears, touched by the skin, tasted by the tongue, smelled by the nose. The five sense organs will help in creating the thought. But the five sense organs have no power, no access to the thought universe, memory universe. As even the thought may be of the flower, but the flower is not interested in its photograph. The physical universe has no access to your mind, the thought universe. Your own body has no access to the thought universe. Your sense organs have no access to the thought universe. Your thoughts cannot be seen with the eyes, heard by your ears, tasted by your tongue, smelt by your nose, touched by your skin. But friends, please know, all your thoughts can be known. There is a difference between seeing and knowing, hearing and knowing, Touching and knowing, testing and knowing, smelling and knowing. Sense organs perceive, they do not know. Body can, the legs can walk, hands can leap, you can have every type of physical activity, but none of this is part of the knowledge. Your memories cannot be seen, heard, touched, tested, smelled. Your memories, your memories, you cannot walk into that memory world with your leg. You can grab your memory with your hand. You cannot. Your memories only can be known. And known means what? There is a knowing principle. Call it Chaitana, Chaitanya, Consciousness. Just see that. Knowing. Always there. That is why, friends, you are always at home. You can forget the universe, which you do. How many people remember the universe? You are sitting around at home. But do you know you are sitting in the world? How many people remember? While you are walking on this earth, do you remember it is a part of the earth itself? You think you are walking on your home front. Whatever you see, hear, taste, touch, the universe is present. But how many people remember the universe there? Think, friends. All this, whatever you perceive, 
the thoughts are gone. And those thoughts are known. How? With eyes you see, with eyes you see, with ears you hear, with the tongue you taste, with nose you smell, with skin you touch, with what do you know? What is the knowing principle? Consciousness. Everybody knows, Janami, Janami, that in, it comes in your Dakshinamuti Dotam, Janami, Ditameva, Bhanta, Manubhati, Yeta, Samastam, Jagat. Swami is teaching that Dakshinamuti Dotam out of the universe. Janami. Knowing, knowing, knowing is continuous. Knowing, listening, knowing, touching, knowing, eating, knowing, singing, knowing, dancing, knowing, jumping, knowing, moving, in every action. Knowing is permanent. It's an inseparable part of every experience. That is why Swami, you are so fantastic. Do not wait to experience yourself. Because every experiencing, seeing is an experiencing, hearing is an experiencing, experiencing, touching is an experiencing, thinking is an experiencing, knowing, continuously experiencing, and that experiencing of knowing shall never ever go. You see, you are experiencing it. You do not see, you are experiencing it. You touch, you experience it. You do not touch, you experience it. There is a thought you are experiencing it. There is no thought you are experiencing it. That is why Chetana Anuhava Swarupa. That is the supreme most thing. The way Swami reveals it, those who grasp it, they have made it. So there is no question of asking how to be with it. Ask yourself, can you be without it? <laughs> like what Swami you say very nicely says, say, well, can I, you know, can I reach God? Swami's answer is what? Can you be away from God? <laughs> Can you be away from the universe? Can you reach the universe, friends? You are always in the universe. If this is at the gross level, at the subtlest level, consciousness, the self is always there. So as you are listening, you are at home. What is home? Home is where you are. You can never be away. Think of it. You can never be away. But ask yourself a question. How many people really want to be out of home? How many people really want? At home is to be with yourself. Yeah, that is the ultimate home. How many people want it? Everybody wants in today's world Oh, Wimbledon going on. Ayo, correct time now. The, now there will be semi-final will be going on in Wimbledon. I have to watch this nonsense. Or the Euro Cup is going on. Or there is a big conference going on. Political, social, financial. Every type of celebration is going on. Olympics. Everybody wants to see that. Nobody wants to be at home. That is where you are, you are continuously competing and comparing. Oh, I went to Wimbledon. I went to Euro Cup. I went to London. I went to Himalayas. I went to so. What is more important, friends? Who you are or what you are experiencing? Who you are or what you have? Who you are is always at home. You are with yourself always at home. I am sitting down here. You are sitting down there. Understand, friends. You close your eyes. I don't exist for you. I close my eyes. You don't exist for me. But you are as conscious as I am. Your memories can always change. Listen, friends. Think for yourself. Your memories shall not last forever. How many memories you have lost? Self-deleting. You don't have to delete it. Neither forgetting is your choice, friends. Forgetting is not your choice. Can you say, Swamiji, leave me two minutes and let me forget new things and come back? No, sir. Forgetting is not your job. Forgetting happens. But for a change, try to be unconscious, unaware. Please be unaware. 
Don't be conscious. If I say close your eyes, if I say don't see, you immediately close your eyes. Don't hear, you put your hand on your ears. Don't taste, don't put on your tongue. Don't be aware. What shall you do? You are eternally, eternally at home with yourself. But how many people are interested in that, friends? How many people are interested? Everybody wants now, now especially if you look at this whole thing, whether it is a secular experience, a secular world, or even religious world, people are more interested in perception, sensation, projection, position, comparison all the time. I have gone around the world, I have got so many disciples, I have got so many ashrams, or I have read so many books, or did not read those many, these many books. Or if you are a secular person, I have the thousand acre, ten thousand acre. Have it. Who says not? But what all you have will not stand the test of time. What you have, you cannot protect. Who you are, you cannot lose. Think for yourself. Who you are, you can never ever lose. Your eyes can go blind. Your ears can go deaf. The body shall of course be destroyed. Pass away in time. But as for look for yourself, your thoughts also, memories will be forgotten. But you can never ever be unaware. I'm taking for granted that all of you have been listening, we have listened to Swami for a long, long time and listened to the next generation teachers. It's always there, waking dream deep sleep. You can never be unaware. So that is something not many people are willing to see that. That is why they find it very difficult. What is difficult is, friends, to see is difficult. My eyes can lose, you can cataract. To hear is difficult because you can lose your hearing capacity. Nerves will be out of order. You may lose your walking. You may lose your mind. You may lose your memories. It's very, very difficult. But you can never ever lose to be unconscious. You can never ever lose the being aware. A child when he's born, if he is lame, you keep him. Listen carefully. Even if he's lame, you keep him. He's blind, you keep him. You don't bury them. You don't consider them dead. The fellow child is deaf, you don't bury them. But the child is unconscious. You don't bury them because the child is conscious. So the symbol of life, always there, everybody. We begin with that. We never end with anything. It's a beginningless, endless stuff. Always at home with yourself. So please see that, friends. It's very, very, what shall I say? Inescapable existence. Try to see for yourself. What try? It's instantaneous, instantaneous. That is why when you try to remember, take that one. If you try to remember something, what are you doing? First you are being conscious, waiting for a thought. Like, suppose I say, see. What shall you do? You keep your eyes open. Seeing is continuous. But the flower is not yet there. I bring the flower. Oh, I see the flower. Because you are seeing, whatever comes on the way, you see. Because you are hearing continuously, whatever sound comes, oh, I hear this sound. Seeing is continuous. Hearing is continuous. As long as your eyes are in good shape, ears are in good shape. Eyes can be lost. Ears can be lost. Consciousness. Can you be saying you are unconscious, unaware? Your thoughts can be lost. You can be struggling. I don't remember. I don't. When you are struggling, I don't remember. I don't remember. What does it mean? You are conscious that the thoughts are not coming. So be with that. That is yourself. How many people are interested in being themselves? But what you have has become more important. What you experience, what you see, hear, taste, touch, they are important. But they are not more important than you. Because who you, because you are, therefore you see, hear, taste, touch. 
because you are conscious, therefore your thoughts are ever waiting for, or can be thoughts can be forgotten. But you are something always there. That is why the focus in self-awareness, Atma Gyan, is always on yourself, which is absolutely simple. Nothing needs to be done. To see, open your eyes. To hear, open your ears. Go to the, understand, you have to go to the range. If the sound is out of your range, you cannot hear. The food is out of your tongue, you cannot taste. Consciousness is never out of range. Be aware of what? Anything you say. Think of an universe, the pictures you have seen by the Hubble telescope or whatever this is, the pictures of the universe. It can come back to your memory. Hundred years back, thousand years back, you can imagine. Because awareness is always there. So it is very important, friends. There is no struggle to be yourself. You are at home with yourself effortlessly at all times, all places, all conditions. What you see can be forgotten. What you hear can go away. But you are always with yourself. Always at home. But you should be interested in knowing. Even if the teacher says that the scriptures reveal it, you have no interest because you are more, if the person is interested more, I am going to attend that marriage. It's a very big marriage taking place. Or the big Olympic Games taking place. So that... So that you can compare with the other people. You know, last summer I went to London for a holiday. I went to Switzerland. Somebody said, I want to moon. Sir, what is that? How does it matter? You understand, friends? In your game of life, you are the superstar. If marriage today, and you so many people are marrying these days, and you know that what high-profile marriage, the world leaders are coming, and the princes are coming, princes are coming, the... The musicians are coming, the movie people are coming. But who is the superstar in your marriage? You are the superstar. If you are not there, what marriage? In this universe, who is the superstar? You. If you are there and you are aware of yourself, nothing ever touches you. Nothing ever can touch you. You are born without name. You are born without memories. You are born without achievements or failures. And the time shall come when your failures, achievements will mean nothing. Your name will not be there. As they say, when you were born, there was a breathing. The breath was there. Name was not there. When the person, the body lying dead, the breath is gone. The name is lying down. It means nothing. But awareness is something always there with yourself. It's not you. I'm not the only one. That beauty it is, is the absolute, what's that, socialism. But everybody is one and the same. Who you are, who I am, who everybody is, same. Even Brahmai Baham Idam Jagatsa Sakalam Chin Matra Vistaritam. The whole universe. Name it trees, plants, water, elements, anything, everything is said. But what you have is different from what I have. That is why people compare. I have a small house, you have a big house, you have a palace, you have this car, that car. In India, 20 years back, 30 years back, did anybody even hear about Rolls Royce? Now you shall see in media, social media, what? This Rolls Royce, that Rolls Royce. Everybody talking about which industrialist is, how many cars, how does it matter to me? They are driving to the destination, I'm walking to the destination, destination I'm going. They are having rich food, I'm having small food. Eating I am. What is more important? What is something? What is something which is which is more important? The best the person can be richest man cannot digest food because of heavy diseases, or he want to maintain the thinness. Therefore, he eats grass. I mean the salads. But other people happily enjoying themselves. Sometimes the 70, 80, 90 are also they leave. Just think of it, friends. It is something absolutely important. That you are there and you must be aware of yourself. That is the most important thing. Other day, somebody sent me a nice uh, joke. <laughs> the joke is that there was a, a person who was, uh, they, they, he had written a book. And in three months' time, it sold three million copies. In three months' time, three million copies he sold. 
what was the name of the book how to manage your wife the name of the book is how to manage your wife after 3 months suddenly the author as well as the publisher they discover a hey, hey, there is something wrong that was not wife the book was how to manage your life so they withdrew all the books and they corrected the everything and wrote how to manage your life in 3 months time not even 3 books sold when everybody is interested in managing how to manage my wife how to manage my husband how to manage my friends how to manage my job how to be a prime minister how to be a president how to be the ceo how to be you know what how to keep people under control really nobody wants to manage himself tell me sir who creates problem for you think for it who creates the problem for you in the creation there is no problem by itself listen please water is it a blessing or a curse if you know how to swim it is jala krida is a playing in the waters if you don't know how to swim you die money a blessing or a curse if you know how to use the wealth it's a blessing if you don't know how to use it it's a curse food blessing or a curse anything for that matter friends in this universe there is nothing which is an absolute blessing or absolute curse it depends upon you so if there is a problem in life who creates your problem don't say others create my problem nobody shall create your problem if you listen relatively understand relatively there can be convenience in convenience but nobody can touch you at any time you can say oh that man is talking so much nonsense let them talk what they talk is their privilege what i take is reaction is my privilege to react or not to react is my privilege what the person is talking or not talking that's his so what is issue problem what the other person say or how you react that there is a virus is not a problem your immunity is down you get conjunctivitis you get covid but if your immunity is strong you are living in the germs world but nothing can touch you that absolute immunity you find you within yourself being who you are that is why it is so important that the person must understand about himself it is not trying to waste your time on somebody and this is where does it exist in your own physical body think of it in your own physical body i see say it very very nicely please think you talk come to that idea of home it is so beautiful friends where are you living wherever you are living we call it our home right your own house now think of it wherever you are living you call it as your home now this is your home your home you think of it now this is my this is our ashram we are staying here think of it right suppose i go to your house and then i shout and the in front of your house anybody there will your house reply will your doors reply will your windows will reply anybody will respond nobody because how shall not respond the indweller responds the person who is living in the house responds how it doesn't respond come to your body the person is sleeping hey get up will the body get up suppose you call him the fellow doesn't get up shake him up put some water on his body doesn't get up no response what shall you say chala gaya left because body doesn't respond is an instrument through which the response comes understand just like this instrument i'm talking to you friends this physical body doesn't talk physical body doesn't talk if the speech is good is the suppose there is a, you know microphone the speech is good will you put flower on the microphone no 
If the speech is bad, will you destroy the microphone? No. If the person is speaking, microphone, what it does it is just amplifies. A microphone amplifies. The microphone doesn't speak. Microphone amplifies. If that much you understand, your body doesn't speak. You are using your body to speak, to amplify your thought. Your thoughts are inaudible. Good. Your thoughts are invisible. Good. If you want to express your thoughts, you have to speak your thought. That is why this microphone, this physical body of a microphone amplifies our thought. I can speak slowly, slowly, slowly. I can, hey, come here. I can laugh. But the body by itself cannot speak. It's an amp it amplifies, it amplifies. And what are you amplifying? Your thoughts. Thoughts do not amplify themselves. Your the thoughts come. But in that memory, listen, friends, in that thought, the thought level, no thought can be amplified just like that. You can be conscious, but that must be one more thought, which is very important. I thought, individuality. I can't take it. I want to speak it out. I want to give a piece of my mind because you, your thoughts are coming, rest, driving you restless. Instead of you being conscious with yourself, by habit, we are like that. That thought is a beautiful subject anyway about ahankar, the I thought. He says, I must give a piece of my mind. So what do you do? Boom. What are you doing? What your reactions are taking place, now you don't want to keep it to yourself. You want to share it with everybody, distribute to everybody. Shout. If you don't choose, nobody shall know what you are thinking. Don't you do that. When you get angry with somebody, but when you go, hello, how are you? Inside, your rascal is coming. You, know, you, did. Ah. you shall think something. You shall speak something. Understand? How does it happen? In a conscious mind, the thoughts are coming. Are you being conscious? Even before expressing your thought, are you aware that you are expressing your thought? Your thought do not get expressed by themselves. Having a body is not your Decision, body is there. Seeing is not your function. Understand, friends. You don't need to say, I see to see. You don't need to say, I am born to be born. Ask yourself, what was your contribution towards the birth of your own body? What did you contribute? How did you participate in the production or the existence of your own body? Nothing. It came. Your heart is pumping. Are you pumping the heart? I see. What are you doing about it? Ears here. What are you doing about it? Digestion takes place. Hunger comes. What do you do? Involuntary activity. Even friends understand. You go to sleep. What do you do for sleeping? You just put your body down. You just put your body down. Then wait for the sleep to overtake. And then still more important. Can you decide when to get up? Getting up, is it your decision or it happens? I thought is not needed for any activities to take place. But that thought has taken the supreme most post and therefore fully confused. I see, I cannot see, I hear, I cannot hear, I'm so old, I'm so rich, I'm so poor, I'm so stupid. Huh? Every moment, one thought bugs you. Only one thought. Nobody in the universe bugs you like you bugging yourself. Even that thought also, friends, the blessing, you know, you are aware. So what is that is most important? Where are you living all the time? Not in the outside world. Not in your physical body. Not in your senses. Not at the level of your thoughts. Neither the either. At all times, you are living in consciousness. 
that is your home. The supreme home, that is where Bhagavan says in Bhagavad Gita, all of you have heard, Yadgatvana Nivartante Taddhama Paramam. That is the Param Dham, the supreme abode of everybody. At no time somebody can displace you. Nobody can take you away from it. Nobody can deny you the access to yourself. Nothing in this universe can do that. That the worst problem you can have in this universe is the teachers in the secular world, the teachers in the religious world give you an identity instead of taking you beyond the identity. The self-knowledge, Atma Gyan, is all about knowing about who you are. It's not a name, it's not a position, it's not a thought, it is not the scriptures. Am I talking nonsense? Then Mundo Kapuni said, it's full nonsense. Why he says, do I mean Divedita? Two types of knowledge must be gained there. Paracha aparacha, paravidya aparavidya. Paravidya is supreme knowledge about yourself being who you are, absolute knowledge. And aparavidya, what is tatra apara, what is the least? Tatra apara, rik, shama, yajur. Those of you who are Sanskrit, those of you who have studied this thing, rik, shama, yajur, atharvana, vedas, sandhas, siksya, kalpa, jyotisha, nirupta, everything aparavidya. All that is written, all that is spoken is not the truth. You write, nobody can write about the truth. Nobody can speak the truth. Truth, indescribable. You are who you are. Shetana consciousness. Ekam akshara. One thing. Imperishable. Cannot be described. Therefore, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. It's always there with yourself who you are. Nobody can take it away from you. The same consciousness with one physical body, if you call it the jiva, the same consciousness with the macrocosmic universe, totality, samasti, you call it Ishwara. So from the body standpoint, has been an inseparable part of the universe, therefore God, Ishwara, from the standpoint of the self-awareness, Sagum Nirguna Brahma, there is nothing other than it. So you can say it, Brahmevaham idam jagatsa sakalam chin matra vistaritam, am Brahmasmi, I am the absolute, and that is pervading everywhere. Or you can say, Ishavashyam idam sarvam. Take the forms in which your forms are included or every form is included. Name it anything you like. Shiva, Hari, Rama, Krishna, X, Y, Z, any name you like. Basically, friends, the universe is a nameless universe. You know how many stars and planets and galaxies have not been named yet? In this world also there are many things have not been named yet. Nameless. You are born nameless. Now stuck with the name. Somebody gave you a name, but nobody can give you nameless. Because you are the nameless, absolute, always at home with yourself. Therefore, when a person is aware of you, you people say, Somebody, how to be at home with myself? How to be? Ask yourself, how can I escape it? You cannot. Because you that is one thought goops it up. Inside is only one thought. I thought. Not understanding about one's own nature. That is why the scripture goes on giving you. This teachers reveal it. The teachers reveal it. Prostu maunam vyakhyanam shishyastu chinna samsaya. The teacher talks in silence. Students are okay. Where all the words drop out. All concepts drop out. Therefore, you cannot say, you can ever say that you can be away from yourself. It is difficult to continue to see. I see. It is difficult to continue to listen. It is difficult, not difficult, impossible to remain young physically. <laughs> it is impossible to be rich or poor permanently. But it is something absolutely impossible not to be immortal. Not to be absolute, not to be happy, not to be conscious or pervasive. So choice is yours. One child with that I shall finish it up. Maybe 
Is there any question answer? Okay, I shall see, you know, sort of uh, one child one day, I was uh, going to somebody's house and then um, early morning the family says, Swamiji, I can have a little meditation. I said, okay, sit down. And this child is 8 to 10 year old. He also always sit down there. Whatever goes on, quietly sitting down, listening everything, but will not tell you anything. So that day I just sit down, I said, close your eyes, and before that, switch off the light. You know, what is that 10 year old fellow say? <laughs> he says, well, Swamiji, how to switch off light inside? Can you beat it? The 10 year old, because he is yet to be spoiled by these fancy descriptions, logics, comparisons, contrast. Say, so how do I switch off the light inside? You are conscious. That is why you take this language of absolute wisdom or also take the devotion as in the Kashi Panchakam Bhagavan Shankara will say, Panche Shuko Se Suadirajamana Buddhir Bhavani Pratideha Geham Sakshi Shiva Sarvagaton Taratma Sakashikaham Nijabodha Rupa. How beautiful. You want to go to Tirthasthanam? The greatest Tirthasthanam pilgrimage center is your own body. Pratideha Geham. Pratideha. Everybody. Not a black body, ground body, yellow body, this body, that body. No. Every person, man, woman, transgender, doesn't matter. Believer, non-believer, rascals, rogues, you, whatever you may decide, sir. Every individual body, be it a human body, animal body, sand, dust, anything anywhere in friends, please appreciate. That is the abode of Ishwar. Just like. If I say universe, where is the universe? Where you are sitting down here? Is universe. If, if I say, touch the universe, what shall you touch? How do you touch the universe? Because you think universe is somewhere. Universe is here included. Touch yourself. Earth, touch yourself. Ishwara, touch yourself. There is nobody less divine, more divine. We divide this world in the name of religions. We divide in the name of the different countries and continents. The undivided universe, undivided creation, where everybody is an inseparable part of it. Just like in your physical body, from brain to toes, everything is body. To touch your nose, touch your ear. Eyes, touch your ear. Your ears, touch your ear. If I say touch your body, should you remove your hand from your ear and touch it here? <laughs> body is everywhere. To touch your body, where should you touch? Anywhere. But touch nose in one place. Touch the universe. Touch Ishwara. All pervasive. When the scripture tells you that you are all pervasive, you are all knowing, ever existing, you are fighting with the teacher. How can you show me mortal? How can you show I am everywhere? Because you have created your own little prison. You have created your own prison. That is why you say, how can I be everywhere? Because when I am the physical body, how can I be everywhere? That which is everywhere is here. And that which is here also is everywhere. Yadeveha tada mutra. Yada mutra tada nivya. Mrityosa mrityu maapnavati yehiya na neva pasyat. How beautiful. Kathopanisa says, whatever is there is here. Whatever is here is there. The person travels from death to death. He who sees nana eva pasyadi, as though differences. Differences are not real. It's one undifferentiated absolute. Like the elements are all over there, physical body made out of same elements. Thoughts are many, consciousness is one. At no time you can ever escape that. Way. So ask yourself, so where is your home? Where you spend maximum time? Not in your home. Your home space you spend 5 hours. Outside space you spend 20 hours. So where is your home? Inside space or outside space? 
There is no other body. How long shall you spend time in your body, sir? Ask yourself, how much time you spend in your body? And how much time, time you spend on specific organs? Some people are touch-oriented, everything touch, touch, touch. Some people sound-oriented, listening to music, listening. Taste-oriented, eat, eat, eat. Smell-oriented, are you getting that? Human being, like animals. Animals are wonderful because they have no confusion. How long do you live? In your body or in a part of your body? Not always. Mind, your thoughts. Because in order to engage yourself in physical action, in this physical universe, vastness, every programming must take place from your body. Planning must take place in your thought level. If today you are sitting down here to listen to me in this, in this our classroom, or wherever you are around the world sitting down and listening, because you had planned today that this time we have this class. Suppose you forget, you will not be sitting down there. Why? Because in your mind, you are living there with million thoughts. Whichever thought is dominant, you will do that. So where are you living the longest? In your thought level? No. The thoughts themselves do not last forever. You are conscious. All the time, at all times, all places, all conditions, it is there. Can you escape, friends? So if you ask how to be always at home, my question is, how can you ever escape being always with yourself? There are other things. Even if you want, you cannot stay with that. The days are dinayaminyo sayam prata sisiravasantu punarayata kala kridati gachati ayam. Time plays, life ebbing out. Evening goes, night comes, day comes, seasons change, everything changes. But you remain the changeless absolute. Ajo nitya sasvato yam pura nahanyate hanyamane sarire. Is unborn, eternal, ever existing. Even the physical body is fizzling out. The whole universe is changing. You are the changeless dimension of the changing universe. Shiva, Shiva. Shiva, Shiva means auspiciousness. Deathless, changeless, timeless. Everybody is saying, so you cannot escape from immortality. You cannot hold on to your body. That is why you are mortality, suffering. I, oh, I am dying. You are not dying. Your body is dying. Oh, I am losing my sight. Your eyes are losing sight. So once you see it, permanent residence, you have been given permanent residence. Residence in absolute, that is why Taddhama Paramam, that is my supreme abode. I can never ever be away from the embrace of the absolute. Right. Lalidana Sasrana, myself, finish it up. Mothers call it a, the truth, masculine, feminine, neuter. Dhyatru dhyana dheya rupa dharma dharma vivarjita. No dhyatru dhyana dheya. Meditator, meditation, objective, meditation, everything one and the same. Dharma dharma vivarjita. Right, wrong, good, bad. Pairs of opposites completely disappear. You are at all times, all places, all conditions. Same reality, jetana, awareness. Shivom, shivom. So the question is, not how to be with myself. How can I escape be myself? Thank you, friends. Thank you so many. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, uh, Maharaj. Thank you. Swamiji, there are one or two questions, Swamiji. You can ask. That's what I was asking in between. Can I ask? Then I would have cut off 10 minutes back. Anyway, tell me. What is, it's a choice is yours. Platform is yours. Please ask. Uh, so we have a question. Um, Swamiji, how does one, how does self-inquiry lead to consciousness experience when self-inquiry is of the mind? Sir, you don't, please appreciate. Call it self-inquiry, call it, you, you say it is all in the mind. What is the mind? What does your thought exist? Do you think thought is inside your head? 
<laughs> this is what exactly the people should understand. When a person forgets himself, meaning what? You have picked up certain identities. Why the inquiry begins? Because there is a forgetting forgetfulness as to who am I? Just think of this much. Suppose I ask now here, who are you? In this room now, some people are here sitting in front of me or wherever you are. Who are you? Who will answer? Your house will answer? Your chairs will answer? Your furniture will answer? The space, air, fire, water, earth, anybody will answer? Your body has any sense to answer? Only one fellow will answer. Who is that? I am. Who has to answer that question? Who has that eye sense? No animal will answer. Who are you? The tiger will not say I am the tiger. No, that individuality, that eye sense is not there with anybody. Only human being. And you don't care whether 7 billion people have that eye sense. Who cares? When your eye sense kills you. But we are always busy talking. That fellow is very ahankari. He is very, uh, you know, sort of uh, arrogant. Hey, don't point out the fingers. As Swamiji will say, one finger is towards other, three finger, four finger, every, you know, four finger is towards Ishwara, three finger, everything is towards you. Only one thing, I. Ask, find out what is the meaning of that word. That is why teaching, learning. That is why so much emphasis Swamiji gave in that knowledge, knowledge, understand about yourself being who you are. No action will going to help you. If the person thinks if I can, you can do your any physical practices, anything you do, sir. But ultimately, you must understand only one word as to what does it mean is who you are. Every other thing, if you do exercises, your body will be very weak. Go for money, you shall be rich or poor. Tell you your success. But try to understand who is this person who is happy with success, happy with failure. There are many people who are happy with failure. Many people happy with success. Many people happy with suffering. Many people happy with luxuries. There are people who love to renounce, renounce. There are some people that love to indulge. What is that? Who does it? I. Only one sense. Think of that. So one word. What does it mean? If I say, Hibiscus, you know immediately hibiscus is. If I say a mango, the picture comes to your head. When you say the word I, what does it come to your head? Do you know why the confusion? Because what are, you say I am rich, you have riches or you are rich? You say you are PhD, you have the degree or you are the degree? You say you are governor, you have the post or you are the post. Think of it, friends. Everything that you have, you taken yourself to be. And how many things you have? Million things. Therefore, you have got million identities. Think of it. Who you are is one. And you don't have to say I to be. Does this flower need a name to exist? Do you need to say this hibiscus, but the hibiscus is existing? Who gave the name to a, a hibiscus? The flower did not give another I, botanist, zoologist, geologist, human individual. Sir, do the naming whatever you like for your bevar, no problem. But don't lose yourself in that sense of I. Unfortunately, what happens is people go in the name of this, these, these things. All practices have become more important. Do whatever you like, sir. Because if you, do, if you say that practices are not good, some people will say destroyed. You do anything you like, but ultimately come back to one's, oneself. That uh, like Bhagavan Sankara says in Vivek Chudamani, Vadantu Sastrani, Kurvantu Karmani, Yajantu Devata, Vajantu Deva, Brahmahitya Bodhena Vinami Mukti, Nasidhyati, Brahma Satantari. Under hundreds of Brahma, billions of years can pass. You shall never be free until you are aware of yourself. If you are identifying with things that you have, think friends, 
Do you understand the difference between I am and I have? Always I give that example in my class. There is a difference between I am a dog, I have a dog. Any difference? I am a dog and I have a dog. Any difference? What you have, you are not. Enako Odambu Sarya Illay Tamil. Mera Tabiat Sheik Nehye Hindi. I, my body is not well, English. Everybody says, I have, I have a body, I have a body. But what is your feeling? I am very sick, I am dying. You are dying? What are you talking? If this much you understand clearly, friends, you don't have to go further anywhere. Live with your body, live with your mind. That is why the teaching, the learning, uh, Swamiji was out of the universe. I was also studying in the university, doing everything, everything, everything. I don't want to go into that mode. First time when I went, the first day, I never listened to all this nonsense, you know, because when you're but carrying, going on for the career and job and all that power and all that, who has time for this nonsense? He's not going to give me a job. And the first day when he went there and he started teaching, what? Touching about our mind, our thoughts, desire. I say, oh my God, first time somebody talking about myself. Did anybody teach you in the university about yourself? Rather, they gave you sense. How can we be PhD? How can we be a professor? How can we be an of administrative officer? How can we do that? They give you all roles, roles, roles. Who is assuming the role? You are there. Roles were not there. Suddenly, roles are more important than you. It is up to you to get tired of this nonsense. The day you are tired, you shall discover it. You will find it. If you are not tired, you enjoy yourself. I am the governor, I am the richest man, I am the poorest man, I am the most greatest renunciate. That nonsense you can do, sir. Nothing will happen until you are looking at yourself. Yes, when the person sells you some other things, he becomes rich. Like many, many practices, religious, secular, everybody makes a business out. But ultimately, you must see very clearly as to who you are. That is why Swamiji's emphasis on knowledge uncompromising, absolutely uncompromising. And when you say that, everybody thinks as though he's destroying everything. He's not destroying everything. Putting everything in his own place. As he tells again and again, Shankara, Khandana, Mandana. He looks as though he's destroying, but give their own due place for that. That's what life should be. I know I'm not this body, but the body has to be taken care of. The thoughts mean nothing to me, yet thoughts have to be used. This creation will always change, but changing universe is needed. But that should not make me forget the changeless, deathless awareness that I have. So you are interested, you must have listened to some. You have not gone there. So many institutions there, so many students are there. Go somewhere and start studying, thinking for yourself. Think for yourself, friends, because thinking is your problem. What you have is not your problem. Your thinking, your thoughts drive you crazy. Think it for yourself. You are sitting down. What drives you crazy? Not the world around. Your thinking. So understand your thinking who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Swamiji, one more question. Suryaji, can you ask? Yeah. Swamiji, one more man, Swamiji. Uh, yeah, I can't see you, but I can hear you. No problem. <laughs> Swamiji, okay, sorry. Uh, Swamiji uh, uh, one question is the, the, the desire to find out or uh, the desire to know who I am, as you said, I am not the body or I am uh, something else other than the body. The desire itself is uh, uh, really uh, uh, quite uh, disturbing. Because <laughs> someone having a strong desire like as you said uh, rightly before, I have to say I'm uh, I have crores of rupees. Who got that? So to someone has a desire to make crores of rupees. Okay. Uh, Bangla, same thing like a desire of who am I? Right. And I understand the question. Please understand. This is what Swamiji the first classes. These desire about the desire the first classes. You know, yeah, it was amazing. I tell you this, that revelry I'll never forget because when your first experience of life, you never forget. When these ideas, and the first time I was a test writer, I will never forget the heat of it. It's so fantastic. Simple things, sir. I mean, himself told so, so sweetly. Desiring for a mango, you are suffering. That's Desiring something. for a laddu, you are suffering. Desiring for a boy or a girl, you are suffering. Desiring for money, you are suffering. 
How does it matter if you suffer a little but desire into enlightenment? But there is a difference. What is the difference? If you fulfill the desire for a mango, you will get a mango, but not a ladu. You fulfill the desire for a ladu, you will get a ladu, not a car. You fulfill the desire for a car, you will get a car, not a house. That is why even the billionaires also feel poor because whatever whatever they have is little. Whatever they don't have is too, 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 too much. That is why nobody feels comfortable in life. Whereas if you desire to be happy, yes, it is a desire. If you fulfill the desire to be happy by discovering the happiness in yourself, the desire goes away and the desire for things also do not bind you anymore. I am a happy, happy to have a car. There is no car. I am still happy. See that point? I am happy to have a car or by having a car, I will be happy. There is a huge difference. I am happy to eat rasgula, but by eating rasgula, I will be happy. If you, by eating rasgula, you are happy, you don't get it, you are miserable. That is what many people. I'll be, I, if I become an officer, if I become a PhD, if I win uh, Wimbledon, if I win the uh, World Cup, that million dreams have been given to you. It's like dream merchants. They have destroyed. Fulfill all these dreams. Go on. Who says not? Do it. But first fulfill the dream of yourself, being who you are. Because if you desire to be happy, fulfill the desire to be happy. Happiness is not a thing. Happiness is not a sensation. People want to be happy, they want to be looking for a sensation. Oh, I have never experienced this music. That's why people say, you have heard this music, but have you heard that music? People take nonsense. Oh, I have no, I'm, I'm happy, I want this food, only this food or that food. Even religion, why also people do that. Oh, I am very, I want to be looking for this knowledge. Okay, uh, then uh, have you done the meditation? Meditation will not help. Have you hold your nose? I held in my nose. Have you done that? But did you study scriptures? By chance you say, yes. Which book you read? Tattvavada. Did you read Bhagavatam? No. Then you don't get it. You say Bhagavatam. Did you read Shankarvasya? Did not read it. Did you read Shankarvasya? Did you read Pramasutra? Are yaar. What is the end to it? For you being who you are, it needs one thought. One thought. That is why in Naiskarima Siddhi, Sura Sura Jaya beautiful writes, Anega Sastram, Vahuvedi Tabhyam, Alpascha Kala, Bahascha Vigna. There are many things to be known. Many, many things to be known. But Anayaka Shastram Bahuveditabhyam, Alpascha Kala, time at our disposal is little. Bahavascha Vigna, difficulties are too, too many. That is why, yet Sarabhutam da Dubhasitabhyam, what is most essential? Take it over. Like Hansav Yatha Akshiram Ivamu Vishram, like the legendary bird swan. You put the water milk. Water mixed milk, milk with water, you will take only a milk, little water. Our life is like that, few years. Even if you are living 8 years, 40 years goes in sleep. 15, 20 years goes in preparing yourself because you are a child. Until 20 years, you don't know anything whatsoever. Another 15, 10 years, you don't know studying this, preparing for life. 4, 5 years, you are alive. In that time, what all nonsense happens? That is, go straight to the point. The Sarabhutam. So, desiring for happiness, right. Ask yourself, Swami he told you so nice, he said, like an atom bomb, it went, like an atomic. You desire for, you say you desire for a mango, for what? To be happy. Happiness. You desire for money, for what? Happiness. happiness. Whatever you desire, I want to see God, why? To be happy. So, all the time, if you fulfill the desire for happiness, being who you are, understand that point, then, Everything is actual fulfilled. By gaining which nothing further to be gained. By knowing which nothing further remains to be known. That is, a, find a teacher. Go see it for yourself. It's amazing, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Swamiji. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Swamiji. Very enlightening. <laughs> we had all of us. Very nice to listen to you after a long time. And uh, welcome. So, so sweet. Today, once again, soon. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much also for you know keeping this uh, opportunity to sit down and share your thoughts with everybody. So, Always a pleasure. So for the information of all, Ashwarya Research and Publication Trust, based at Chennai, organizes this program every month. An illustrious teacher from the Parampara is uh, addressing the interested students. Please, uh, other Swami, Swamini. 
Tattuvidananda ji, Tattuvidyananda ji, please come on our session, have one session with us. I will ask Alagamai to be in touch with you so that you can have one session with us. And uh, uh, thank you all, all participants. Hope you benefited from the evening. Yes, thank you. Swamiji, can we end with a prayer, Swamiji? Yes, yes. please. Uh, okay, uh, I shall do that. Purnamada, I shall tell, okay? Yes, no. Om Swami. Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachyate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vasishyate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Thank you, thank you Swamiji, Namaskar, Namaskar.